this video is a continuation of hypothesis testing with one-way analysis of variance. So this is the second part. Um, just a reminder of what our study is about. We have 20 college students and we're interested in finding out whether the amount of espresso that a college student consumes influences their performance on the video game for the iPad Flappy Bird. So here we are. This is where we left off in the last video. We had just finished computing all of our sums of squares. And we have the sums of squares between, within, and total. And you will note that if you added the sums of squares between and within, you would, in fact, get the sums of squares total. So now we need to come back and talk about the degrees of freedom. And remember that the between source of, um, of variability is due to being in a particular group, our independent variable, which is espresso consumption. And we have four different groups, as you can see here. And so in order to compute that, our degrees of freedom is the number of groups minus one. So in this case, it will be four minus one, which is equal to three. In order to compute the degrees of freedom within, now we need to look at the sample size within each of our four groups. And we happen to have equal sample sizes in each group, and they happen to be five. So we, for each group, we take five minus one, and we get four. And then we sum those values together. So four plus four plus four plus four, because we have four people, four degrees of freedom, excuse me, in each group. And that totals 16. Lastly, we have the total degrees of freedom. And there's two ways that you can compute the total degrees of freedom. You could take the total number of participants, which we just saw was 20 on the previous slide, and subtract 1. The other way you can get it is if you add the degrees of freedom within and the degrees of freedom between. So in this case, our degrees of freedom total is 19. Now, um, you might want to pause and see if you can work out the final three values for this table. Remember that um, these cells, this one under mean squared for total, there is no total mean squared, there's no total F, and there's no F within. So these cells will be empty. So there's three more values you need to compute. So go ahead and pause and work through that to see if you can find what our F statistic would be. Okay. So for the mean squared between, what we would do is take the sums of squares between and divide by the degrees of freedom, which would give us the average amount of variability uh, due to group membership. We do sim something similar here for degrees of freedom within, where we take the sums of squares within and divide by the degrees of freedom within, and we would get, um, we would compute it this way, and here are our values. So the mean squared between is 13.383, and the mean squared within is 5.175. Now, we're not quite finished yet. Our final step is to get the F statistic. And remember, we've estimated now the variance in the population by using something about group membership and here by using individual scores. And so we can get that ratio by saying um, mean squared between, which is the 13 value, divided by mean squared within, which is 5.175. And that yields an F statistic of 2.586. So this brings us to the end of step five in calculating the test statistic, because now we have our F value. So our last step is making a decision, step six. And you'll remember that we determined our critical value in step four as being 3.24, which is cuts off 5% in that tail. And we have our computed um, F statistic, which is 2.586. And we'll say it's probably somewhere about here. This value is, falls about here. And because it does not fall in this 5%, then we're going to say, oops, this should say the calculated F statistic falls within the cutoff. So we will say that we fail to reject the null hypothesis because it's not far enough away from the mean in order for us to um, reject the null hypothesis. It's likely that we could get this result just you know, due to sampling from the same distribution. 
So here is a summary statement for making our decision. We have a graphic here of average flappy bird scores by espresso consumption group. You can see that the mean of no espresso is four. We have one shot and two shots at about 2.6 and or 6.2 and 6.0 respectively, and then three shots at eight. So this the fact that this particular statistic is not significant here means that even this difference between 4.0 and 8.0 is not statistically significant. So we can conclude that the espresso consumption had no significant effect on flappy bird scores. And then this is our notation in APA style. We say F degrees of freedom between of 3 with N of 16 equals is our computed F statistic 2.586 and our p-value is greater than 0 0.05.